Welcome back to the garage. We're really getting into the home stretch of this project. Most of the list is done, only a few priorities left. Today, I hope to finish the brakes, like I've been saying for probably 10 or 15 episodes now. We're gonna get the master cylinder bench bled and installed. We're going to bleed the brakes. I'm gonna get that final major adjustment of the new brakes done, which is already about 75% done. I will hopefully get the e-brake finally adjusted because it's mostly there, it just needs to be nudged a little bit more. And then we're down to drivetrain alone. At this point, I don't have too many more detours to make because I've made all of them. It's time to get back to the final things on the list. So we're gonna focus on brakes, e-brake, once those are done, it is way past time to do some of the basic maintenance things. The oil chains, the filter, the oil lines, the points and condenser. Those have got to be swapped, and I've got the parts, I'm just lazy. The steering box can wait. It's okay, but it can wait for now. Transfer cases, they've got some oil in them. They'll wait just a little bit longer. But then I've got to assess that transmission. Cap and rotor got it I just need to swap it some way somehow I really do want to swap out the exhaust manifold the heat riser is stuck that means if I run the engine for too long or take it for too many long drives it's just gonna boil away my gas I need to resolve that plus it's got a hole in it so with all that let's jump into it I'm losing my dang mind, guys. I was fighting to get this very last old brake line off. This end was definitely extra crusty on here. But it wouldn't come off and I couldn't figure out why until I realized I was tightening it the whole time. <sighs> And with this, my set of handcrafted, artisan, free-range, avocado, toast, whatever, brake lines is done. If I just bought, this would have been done six months ago. And we are long overdue for this part. All right, this thing's just about ready to be installed. We meet again. I took the cotter pins out and didn't put them back in. And as always happens with projects that go on for months, you misplace stuff.
All right, so an embarrassing amount of time later, got my new cotter pins in, new master cylinders bolted up. Should be good to go and not go anywhere. Now, it's time to get that banjo bolt and Y fitting in. Get this thing sealed. Didn't expect it to leak that much. What was the point of bench bleeding? Four letter words. So this happened. <laughs> Fortunately, a replacement can be found at your local Napa for like 10 bucks. So there's a, yeah, there goes 10 bucks. Coming in from the future through the power of video editing, along with your SL134 switch from your local Napa, uh, you'll want to get some kind of wiring connector for it. Now, my local Napa, um, guys who didn't really know what I was talking about, even though they did have the switch. But as it turns out, JEGS does carry a wiring connector for this universal brake switch. It's a number 63071. It's a wiring pigtail for brake light switch. It makes your switch look something like this. And these will hold on there pretty well. That won't fall off or whatever you're gonna put a Jeep through. And it uh, has enough of a pigtail to probably get halfway up the firewall, if not all the way up the firewall. Even comes with some heat shrink tubing. So that'll make my install a little bit cleaner. All right then. That took a little bit more effort than I wish to acknowledge. So fortunately, most of that will be edited out. I do already have my first leak right there. Looks like the line wasn't tightened enough. Well, with this, it's time to wire in the brake light switch to the turn signal circuit. And then we can almost bleed the brakes and move on to the rest of the drivetrain. Now, I know they say it's not a Jeep unless it uh, leaves a mark on your garage floor. But I have some kind of problem down here, I think. Well, yeah, that'd be part of it. So it looks like I'm already leaking transfer case fluid and rust. <laughs> so I'll, I'll bet I forgot to tighten that yoke back down to spec. So this is what happens when you forget to tighten that bolt down to spec. Granted, the, uh, the seal is probably not very good anyways, but what I was trying to avoid was getting all kinds of oil and stuff into the emergency brake drum so it doesn't catch on fire. Okay, so my gasket is soaked and it's seeping out the pan here. Fortunately, this pan was coming off anyways. I just didn't expect it to be off this quick. Here we go, the other boot. Once I get this wire finished and run, plugged into the brake switch, wiring will be 100% done, finally. Then we get to go bleed the brakes. There we go. It's buttoned up nice and clean. Still a bit of brake fluid leaking from both of these. Well, actually not so much on this one, but certainly on this one. 
I guess I'll find out if that's really a problem when the brake bleeding starts. Now I was talking about no more detours, but uh, man, you guys think that pinion seal's leaking? I don't know, guys. It might be. <laughs> well, looks like we've got our first brake line failure. Got the uh, experimental first couple of taps. I was just trying to see if I had enough of the air out of the system, you know, to actuate that brake light. Uh, spoiler alert, I don't. Yeah, come with me here. It was a good little puddle. Well, you can't really see where it was anymore other than where there's no paint. <laughs> but uh, there was a good little puddle of brake fluid. I tightened the fitting on the underside and I think I'll wait to do any more experimental pressing on the brake pedal until I've got the system properly bled and it can actually build pressure. Well, got the Jeep back in its corner for the night, but I just had to clean up another big old, yeah, where was it? Yeah, big old blob of brake fluid from right there. That doesn't bode well because that was the, uh, the passenger rear. I hadn't loosened up anything yet. So, uh, I haven't even started to bleed the brakes yet and they're already leaking. Yep, that's, uh, that's another new puddle. Where's that coming from? Well, my confidence level just went from, yeah, I can figure this out, to, uh, well, maybe vintage Jeeps aren't for me. I'm still trying to figure out how fluid got back this far. I just put the master cylinder in. It was leaking up front quite a bit more than anything. Did a couple of experimental pumps just to see if it bubbled, and it bubbled. I guess I didn't tighten this when I installed it all those weeks ago. And I can't tell which side it was coming from except maybe this side. So that one took a little bit of tightening. And this one. So I've got these two tightened a little bit further than I thought they needed to from the start, and I've still got a fresh trail of brake fluid coming down back here. That's unexpected. Well, it's been a long day. I'm tired, and that's disheartening. Well, gang, here we are. Finally time to bleed these brakes and see how many more leaks they've got. Got the old Lone Wolf 1000 brake bleeder. Get that on there and start bleeding some brakes. Dad's on his way over, so I don't know how much of that we'll get to film, but it's bleeding brakes, so how interesting is it? This has been a long video to make, guys. Who would have thought that brakes would be this complicated to finish? But in the time it's taken me to get this video together, I've already uh, surpassed 300 subscribers, so. Thank you for the support. Uh, hopefully you're liking and leaving comments and telling me how I'm doing. The channel will keep growing and hopefully we'll go on some adventures with this guy. I've taken a few little side trips. You probably saw the vice restoration. I've got another vice taking up most of the workbench right now. Uh, that'll be an interesting one to get going, but you'll see that one in a later video for now. Let's get back to this Jeep because I got to bleed the brakes, I got transmission fluid, I got transfer case fluid, I got differential oil. And if all that works out, we'll take this thing for a drive.
All right, so what looked like a pretty easy job for you guys was actually a royal pain in the butt. So we filled it up, it started leaking in about four places, tightened those up, continued bleeding. Still leaked in a few other places, but long story short, at long last, these brakes are bled. brakes. I think I'll do one more bleed of the whole system to make sure I got those last few air bubbles out from the last few leaks. And then it's good to go for testing purposes. I still want to get it up on jack stands, get it in the gear, get up to speed, and then hit the brakes and see where the wear patterns are on the shoes. Back in the day, you would match the brake shoes to the brake drums. And I haven't really been able to do that, but the creative way to do that would be to get it up to speed, hit the brakes, see where your wear patterns are, that'll give you where the high spots are, and then you can kind of sand down your brake pads and that'll set them up pretty well. Or you just go rocking for a while and make a few hard stops at 50 miles per hour somewhere and that'll sand them down pretty effectively too. I think either works. Whew, that took a long time. There you have it. CJ2A brakes are done. Minus that last bleed, which I'll do off camera. There's no need to show that again. So that's it for this one. If you like what I'm doing, leave me a thumbs up, leave me a comment. That tells the algorithm that I'm doing okay and it helps the channel grow. I appreciate it. Thank you to all the subscribers. Uh, we're well over 300 now and I hope that trend keeps going. We're coming up on the one year anniversary of me having this thing in the garage, so maybe by then I'll have it driving. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.